Hi, and welcome to another Tech Talk Travel video. We're sitting here, here today with Michael Hines, the Chief Architect from Shiji Group at the HSMA E-Day here in Munich, and it's a beautiful sunny day. Michael, how are you? It's great to have you here. I'm doing fine, thanks. thanks I'm doing very me. fine because this is my first kind of conference stuff since COVID. Really? So, yes, I'm, I'm excited to be here again and to get out again and to meet people, interact with people, talk Fantastic. with you. Yeah. So Fantastic. I take it easy today. That's good. That's good. But quite excited. Very good. Well, let's get let's get into it. We have only a short amount of time, and we wanted to take the opportunity to sit down with you and just have a bit of a chat and have a couple of questions. The first sure. one being, um, you've been in this industry now for quite some time. You've made a lot of. Uh, I think progressive steps towards contributing to the industry overall as well when it comes to development of products and platforms. So I'd like to maybe just ask you, and one of the things that we were just talking about offline before yeah. we started was that you told me that you were coding since you were a boy and that you, your first PMS you coded when you were 13 years old. That's right. Very impressive, I have to say. Um, I was, I had no idea that you had that, that type of talent. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about your background, sure. how you got into where you are now, and what was the progression for, for Michael Hines when, when, when life was starting and, and your whole career journey? Okay. How much time do we have? This could easily take three hours. Well, talk and we'll, okay. we'll cut okay. what we need to cut. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm a typical Austrian hotelier child. My parents had a hotel in Austria, in Capun, you know, with the glacier. And I was literally born into the hotel, living, you know, in the hotel for the first 18 years of my life. So from six, seven years on, I was tasked to do front desk check-ins and everything. And you just did it because it was a family hotel. Starting at the age 10, I got interested in computers, like many children do. And, you know, playing games at first and everything. But then I got curious, how do you work with them? How do you program them? And then born out of need, because my father always made me every three days manually check all the guest records that we had in paper. Michael, look for all the guests that have birthed in about 10 days, because we want to write a birthday letter. So it was my job every day at the evening, every second day, to look through those paper files and look at one by one who got birthday you know, in 10 days. Quite awesome work. Yeah, know? yeah. I, of course, said, I want to automate that because I don't want to do this like every two days, spending 45 minutes looking for those files manually. And so with the age of 11, I actually started my first database where I put in all the guest records myself, 4,000 guests at the time, yeah. creating the queues to you know, create all the output and the birthday letters automatically that I only need to put them into the paper envelope and bring them to the mail. That's it. That was my entry. It evolved because it turned out that many jobs that I had to do at the front desk I could, I could automate. So I built a room planner to manage the rooms. I had the guest database already. I started creating an invoicing system where we could create invoices. I had to send all the availability data to our local tourism board, you know, IT system, uh, to actually avoid myself calling in manually on the phone and telling the numbers of available rooms for the next seven days. So I just coded basically this whole application to save myself a time at the front desk. This was 11, 12, 13 years old. Other hotels in the area got interested, and so at the age of 14, I sold this program for the first time to two other hotels in Capron. Uh, for me, you know, today is, I believe, just 2,000 euros or something, but for me as a 14 years old, this was huge money. money yeah. Yeah. And at the point, I actually decided that I will actually go into the software world, because somehow this is all clicking for me in my mind from the beginning, and not go into the hotel world as actually being a hotelier, as my father expected me to. He's been angry about this since. <laughs> Anyhow, so that's how I started, uh, you know, building PMSs. That mm -hmm. was back in 89, 90. Mm -hmm. Obviously, immediately with the rise of the internet in 93, when I started studying, I built the first booking engine in Europe. Mm. And I took reservations already, I remember, in 96 in January for the whole area, which, uh, which is called European Sport Region, Capron See. Mm. We already made over 1 million shillings at the time revenue over the booking engine. This was in January, to, uh, excuse me, 96. And that's how I started. Mm. Out of that, I built a uh, channel manager, first called Hobobox, that might, some older people might remember in Europe, turned into HBSI, still serving over 60,000 hotels today globally. Uh, I started primarily working with Las Vegas hotel chains, Mandalay Bay, uh, etc. to work for on their distribution and you know really traveled the world from basically 99, 2000, 2000 
mm. onwards. Mm. Mm. That's how it started. Yeah, yeah. In and the distribution game. You also were, were very found, foundational in comp companies like Hetris, Snapshot. So, lead us through that transition from from when you were from those days into the Hetris Snapshot days and to where you are now. Talk a little bit about that. It's a good angle. Didn't think about it myself because essentially. I started Hetwurst because when I did HBSI, all the distribution setup, I was always angered by the limitations of the PMSs. We had to work with the PMSs, but they have not been enabling, they've never been built for sharing the information, no. making it available, or enabling anything in distribution because the PMSs were never built for that. No. So I said, I want to build something that's better because I believe, this was in 2006, that the worlds will go together. There will not be a PMS anymore. There will not be a distribution system anymore because there's so much data that needs to go around and all that interfacing produces so much pain that why create two systems in the first place? This is where the cloud came up as well. Mm -hmm. If you actually have the cloud, you don't need to have the PMS in the property anymore because why would you in the first place? There's no reason to have that. So if you put it all together in one system, in one platform, and distribute from there, it takes away so much pain and overhead and integration work, and you can actually increase the reliability of the distribution and in consequence also of the service delivery. Funnily enough, that's still what I'm working on today. Yeah. Still an unsolved challenge well, for a large part of the hotel industry. It's funny you say that because I was going to say, I mean, you make it sound so easy. Everything you just said in the last 20 seconds, 30 seconds sounds so simple and easy, but yet in reality, it seems as though we've still not really gotten there. And that's why. Right. Hotels don't necessarily feel comfortable adopting cloud-based solutions yet, 100%. Um, it's been a struggle. So why? why do you feel that that's the case? What, what, what has been the, the limitation there? Well, I'm a believer. I'm always believing that we can build something that's better, simpler, and drives us into the future. But in order to go into the future, you need to cut off legacy. And cut off legacy is necessary in terms of cutting off old systems, but also old thinking. And that's as much a human issue mm. or challenge mm. Uh, as it is an organizational one. Yeah. Um, and the larger the hotel organization becomes, and we still face this today, I still face this in my discussions and workshops that I'm doing today with the, with the larger chains in the world, overcoming this legacy thinking of, okay, we got this stuff at the hotel, what we call a PMS, we got this central reservation systems, we got distribution over in this bucket here, uh, there's some other thing like revenue management, and then we got events management. There's so many things around, and people, I understand, for simplicity, they like to put each of those challenges into its own bucket. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. And that's how you've been managing stuff for years, not, sorry, not for years, for decades. So it's really difficult and challenging to get out of that thinking because in my perspective, the cloud changes everything in the setup. There's no need anymore to have software in a hotel no. because that was only required because 30, 40 years ago there was no connectivity. Mm. You just had to do the stuff in the hotel because that's where you manage the rooms, where the check-ins and the check-outs. You just had to do it there. Today, you can have everything in the cloud and access it from there centrally. But if you have it in the cloud already, why would you have a separate property management system from a CS? doesn't make sense. All the complexity in there and today's expectation of providing a better shopping experience for the guest or a better service delivery or even going into self-service now with COVID and everything so that guests can do more stuff on their own devices is acting counterintuitively against you know, having those separate systems. It doesn't work anymore, so you need to combine it. Mm. That said, we fully understand that hotel organizations don't want to put all eggs into one basket because if you put everything from hotel management to CEO management, distribution, revenue management, and events management and all that stuff, into one vendor's hands, you make yourself kind of dependent on the vendor. And there have been some negative experiences around that in the past. Yep. We want to learn out of the, from them as well. That's why we adopt an open strategy to say, we want to drive to more simplicity, and simplicity in that regard means you need to reduce the number of systems that drive your hotel business. Mm -hmm. Not down to one, necessarily, but instead of having 11, mm -hmm. you know, getting down to four, would already be a huge leap forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Think about the connectivity between those 11s. That's like a 
logistical function. Absolutely. So that kind of leads on to my next point that I wanted to cover with you is, is what considerations and what are the core considerations of properties, standalone, small regional properties or even larger ones, should they look into and consider when it comes to creating a hotel tech stack today? Because as you said, it could be four, ten different systems, but they all need to be integrated to each other. And how do they prioritize those integrations? What, in your opinion, is the best way to approach that? Well, good question, Andre. Uh, I believe hotels need to understand what are the most important USPs towards the guest. Mm -hmm. And they should invest into enabling those USPs, whether it's guest service, quality, brand, you know, uh, an efficient handling, whatever it might be. Take those USBs that you think you, your hotel, your brand have, and you need to focus around that. And try to make that experience from guest handling to your staff handling to the actual, you know, end result in the hotel uh, as frictionless as possible. Try to combine this into one central system. There might be other, what I always call helper systems on the side, to get stuff done in other areas. But focus on your USPs and try to invest there, but minimize the number of systems. If you need to actually provide or handle different vendors, you need to think about where to split it. I believe the past approach to splitting is this is in the hotel, this is here, this is there, is not appropriate anymore because we're not talking about geography anymore, really. It's about, it's all in the cloud, so you rather need to separate by function. Say, okay, this is all my software that deals with hotel bedrooms, for example. This is my software that deals with meeting and events, for example. Um, but whether it's distribution of hotel rooms, the fulfillment of hotel rooms, or the hotel operations requirements for housekeeping and financial reporting, whatever, that should come out of the same stack. Mm -hmm. Because then you minimize friction by having interfaces that actually impact the operations if something doesn't work that well. And with every interface you have in the queue somewhere, it limits your ability to serve the guests better or make your staff more efficient or work better. That's what I believe in. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been kind of trying to work on since Hetras to combine many of those functions Understanding revenue management is perfect as a, as a helper function because it does its job and you can select the best out of the you know, different vendors that are out there. And to interface that is quite straightforward. And even if this interface is down for half an hour, an hour, it's not really impacting your operations. Mm -hmm. So that's a great way to, to kind of separate systems. Okay, cool. Last question uh, before we wrap it up. Uh, leadership, I'd like to get your take on what what is modern leadership today? So if I was to ask you in one sentence, how would you define modern leadership or a modern leader? What would you say? That's a tough one. Yeah, I know, I'm That's sorry. A tough one. <laughs> That's fine. I would say leadership in terms of, leadership actually applies towards employees, but also towards customers or guests in terms of the hotel industry. So you need to live and breathe something that you believe in. You need to be excited by getting something done, by overcoming challenges and hurdles, by doing what you do. You need to define yourself by what you want to achieve. If you take a lead in that regard, like you running ahead and you try to pull away the big rocks to make your story a success, then the people will follow you because even if the objective might be minor, it's an objective and we can make something happen, we can make something better or easier or cheaper or whatever it is, and then people will follow you. And then you just need to stay true to yourself and to some, how should I say, base human needs for empathy, for employees, and also for guests and partners to treat them humanly. And in Austria, in German, there's a good word, as menschelt. And this is what's necessary to bring it back down on the ground and make people feel being part of that community to achieve something. Very good. All right, Michael, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to see thanks, you Andre. again. Thank you. And for taking 20 minutes with us today. It's been wonderful. Pleasure. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much.